I see you got a neck brace on, and so if you want me to, I can pray for you, and we can just get rid of that. If you, here, here's when I see this spirit. I mean, you might be having bone problems, but this spirit looks like it's just dealing with like muscles and tendons, especially on the right hand side of your your neck region. Oh, he said the doctor said you had what on the right side? Stenosis. Stenosis. Stenosis is a narrowing of the arteries. Oh, a narrowing the, of the arteries. So okay. that the nerves are crushed on the right-hand side. Is that right? It and in Jesus' name, we take authority over that demonic spirit on the right-hand side of her neck region. You can't stay because we have authority over you in Jesus' name. And, okay, now move your neck around, Deanna. Move it around. How much better is that? Oh, it's 100% better. Isn't God Woo! a good God? Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. What a good God we serve. Amen. We thank you so much for tuning into our program. And stay in tune to this program because we've got some exceptional things in the heart of God that will bless you. We want to thank all of our partners for helping us with the TV ministry. It's because of you that uh, we're able to have the TV ministry. We're looking for more partners because we want to do more. We want to spread the good news of God all over the world. And so anybody can be a partner. Just go to melbond.com. And now we want to take you into the program, and I want to talk about how that you are perfect. God thinks you're perfect. You know, there's a lot of people that has different opinions of you. You may have a, an opinion of you, but the opinion that is the most powerful, the opinion that is the best is God's opinion. And God thinks you're perfect. He thinks you're perfect. I'm going to show you that as I study the Bible, I find about 113 verses in the New Testament that clearly teaches us that we're perfect because Jesus died on the cross and paid the price for us to be perfect. Not in the sweet by and by, but right now. We're perfect. See, you have to, before you can get on an airplane, you have to have a ticket to get on the plane. And to get to heaven, you have to have the ticket. And the ticket says, by the stripes of Jesus, you are perfect. Because he who knew no sin becomes sin for you, that you would become the righteousness of God. In the Greek, it has the same meaning as perfect. And so if Jesus is the Lord of your life, you've got a ticket to go to heaven. And the, only, and the ticket says, you know, if it was a real ticket, physical, and you have to get in to the pearly gates, you have to have your ticket, and it would have your name on there. And it would, you know, it would say, Jerry is perfect because Jesus says so. And you show him the ticket, says, come on in. Isn't that wonderful? And so I'm going to look at some of those verses, and then I'm going to show you it's one thing for somebody to give you something, but it's another thing to be able to utilize it. For instance, that, uh, you know, Andrew, if, uh, if you'd never seen a car before in your life, never seen one before in your life, don't, and you don't know anything about it, and then somebody comes up to you and says, I want to give you this car. Uh, I want to give you this Bentley, brand new Bentley. It wouldn't do you no good. You wouldn't, you know, you might sit in the back seat. You can't drive it. But if they give you a gift and they give you the owner's manual or, and then somebody to teach you how to drive it, then you've got a wonderful, wonderful gift. And if somebody gives you one and you don't want it, I'm going to give you my address, Andrew. I'd like to have a white one. But you see what I'm saying? No, I, I really don't. I, I, I get enough problems. So, so I don't need that. But what I'm saying is we've got an instruction manual. How to receive the perfection. And it's so extremely, extraordinarily simple. And you're going to love it. And you can start applying it. And see, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians, I think it's 120, it says, all the promises of God are yes and amen. And so you can walk away from here absolutely perfect, receiving perfection. Because you are, God says you are, 
And so now you need to learn to drive this. And I'm going to show you in simplicity how to drive this. First of all, we're going to look at, uh, and, and like I said, I can't cover all of those this morning. There's, I find it a minimum of 113 verses that clearly tells us that we're perfect. However, in the original language of the Bible, there are different words that has the same meaning. We do that with everything in life. We do that with everything in, in life. You know, just like uh, uh, Calvin. I hear Calvin, just stand up. Let everybody see what a good-looking man looks like. There you go. Okay, so, so Calvin is a man. He's also a husband. And he's also your grandpa, too. Right? And so three different words, but we're talking about the same subject. A man. He's a man. He's a male. He's a husband. He's a grandpa. He's a father. All those words, and we're talking about the same individual. You can go ahead and be seated if you like, Calvin. It, it, you know, I'm standing. If you want to keep standing, you won't bother me. But you see what I'm saying? That there are different words that is talking about the same subject. And the word righteousness also means perfect in the original language. It has exactly the same meaning as being perfect. And, and the word holy also means that perfect. If you're holy, you're perfect. God's holy. He's perfect. And then you see the word glory. And so it also means perfect. And so then, of course, the word perfect means perfect. There's about 20 verses, at least 20, that uses in our modern day Bibles that uses the exact word perfect, like Matthew 5, 48, where Jesus says, be ye perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So God, Jesus is telling us, he's really commanding us to be like our Father. But more than being a, a commandment, it's an invitation. Think of that, Carnell. God's given us the invitation to be perfect as God is perfect. Well, you know, if uh, Carnell, you've got some children too, right? And they've got your DNA. Well, we've got our father's DNA. And his DNA says we're perfect. He says, be ye perfect, just like your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And I'm not using this as a play on words, that it's just a spiritual thing. It's, no, no. As I study in the original language, it's talking about being perfect in every area of thinking. Perfect in your health. Perfect in your finances. Perfect in your joy. Perfect in every area of thinking. I mean, it's a, the devil has cheated. He has cheated the human race by even that word perfect. In, in fact, you can say this to anybody, even among Christians. And you can talk about being perfect, and they'll, they'll, they'll say this every time. We've, we've heard it probably a hundred times. If you've lived 20 years, you've heard it all your life. People will say, well, nobody's perfect. How many have heard that? They say, well, nobody's perfect. And see, that is a lie from the pits of hell. And then here's a little demon spirit that's behind it that kind of sets on your shoulder. And then he says, nobody's perfect. And so why try to be? A lie from the pits of hell. And we're, we are perfect. And there's a simple, some simple instructions to receive it. And uh, number one, we just have to believe God's word. Yeah. And there's a hundred and, you know, at least 110, 113 verses that I find. So Jesus said, be ye perfect. If we didn't have any more, that's, that's it. But there's more. And then if you look in James in chapter 1 and verse 4, and I'm going to quote some verses real quick, so you, you might want to write these down so that we can cover more ground in a smaller amount of time. And here the Bible says, let patience have her perfect work so that you can be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, if you're perfect, if you're perfect, then you're entire. You don't want anything. And the reason why you don't want anything is because the Lord is your shepherd and he meets all your needs according to his riches and glory. It, it's, it's not a play on words that, oh, you're so, you're perfect spiritually and so you can just live 
horribly, and it's okay because at least you've got the major thing in your life. You've got perfection in your spirit. That isn't what God is saying. There's so many scriptures that teaches us. Read 2 Corinthians in chapter 3 and chapter 4 where it talks about how that God's glory for us in, the, in, this, in this life, in our earthen vessels. Kind of think of it this way. If God can't take care of us temporally, then he can't take, cover, take care of us eternally. This is, this is the small thing. And so, but he can take care of us eternally, and he can take care of us temporally. And he's paid the way. We just need to learn to receive it. Now let's look at the word righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says, He, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us that we would become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The same righteousness that God has, we have it because Jesus, he died on the cross and he paid the price for us. That we, in that word righteous, has exactly the same meaning as perfect in, in the original language. It has the same meaning. You, it may use different words like innocent, faultless, but if you're innocent and you're faultless, you know, and it uses other words that has the same meaning as being perfect. He who knew no sin, he paid the price. We can't pay it. If, if you think you can do some good to get justification, to become righteousness, the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. So if we think that I can dress this flesh up, do all these religious things to become righteous, then we get cheated. We get self-righteousness. That's something that you learn. You can't, you can't get it by self. The only way you can get it, Martha, is Martha, Marcia, is by God's grace. He gave it to us. It's called the gift of righteousness. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. If I had to earn it, Oh, it'd be a lot of work. It'd make me sad to have to earn all that. I'd be working for another 10,000 years to try to earn a microscopic portion of God's righteousness. But he says, I just give it to you. That's right. reason Christmas is so wonderful because we get gifts that we don't earn. They just, people love us. It says, here, I want to give you that. And, and God gave us the gift of righteousness. And then Romans in chapter 6, verse 19, the Bible says, even as you have yielded your members to unrighteousness, now yield them to righteousness. And then it goes on to righteousness and holiness. Again, perfection. All of us have yielded. It, sin is easy. We can yield our members, our members, our five physical senses, we can yield them to sin. It's extremely easy to yield our Members, our tongue, our eyes, our ears, our feet. It's easy to surrender. Our taste buds, to taste, to drink things that we shouldn't. It's easy. It's easy. But guess what? God is more powerful than the devil. And so it's easier to surrender to righteousness to our members than it is. It's easier than sin. Isn't that awesome? So he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we'd become the righteousness of God in Christ, even as you yielded your members. And then look, look at the word holiness. Uh, turn your Bibles if you want to, and, because I don't want to, I haven't got this memorized real good. Uh, the book of Ephesians in chapter 1 and verse 4, that God ordained us to be holy before the foundations of the, the earth. Because he knew that he needed to have people that would be perfect to go to heaven. And so in verse 4, it says, According as he, God, hath chosen us, we are the us in him. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord, then he's chosen us in him before the foundations of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So God can't. You know, perfection and holiness, you can't blame us for anything because there is no blame. We're holy. And then verse 18, the Bible teaches us, and this is a wonderful uh, a prayer. In fact, the, this prayer starts Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, uh, and then it goes on to the end of this chapter and picks up again in chapter 3, verse 14, all the way to verse 21. 
And I remember Brother Hagen, I sat in one of his meetings, the minister's meeting, about 40, 45 years ago. And he said he had been pastoring for like 12 years, and the Lord showed him this prayer. And he says, I started praying that prayer every day. And he says, I've seen how rich and how it changed me so much. He says, I prayed it several times every day. And after a few months, he says, it was like I was reading the Bible like I've never read it before. You know, it's one thing to understand the Bible with your intellect, but it's another thing to have the teacher of teachers, the Holy Ghost, to teach it to you. You know, to, to have somebody to mentor you, to have, you know, to some, and, and he's the author of the book. And so when you pray this prayer, and it starts out, verse 18, pray every day that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that we would know what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance to us as the saints of God is. So, and what the exceeding greatness of his power to us that believe. And so here again, we find that this word, uh, I, that we would know the riches of his glory. And that word glory has the same meaning as, as, as being perfect. Now, looking at the word glory, that in John chapter 17, here's another word, glory, that has the same meaning as perfect. John 7, 17, verse 21 and 22 real favorite passage of scripture for me and here the bible says that jesus prayed for me and you he prayed for all of those that shall believe and so jesus always prayed the perfect will of god and jesus always got his prayers answered and he said and so you read this go home and read it john in fact write it down john chapter 17 verse 21 through 22 and jesus prayed he said father i pray that the same glory that you gave me, give it to them that believe on me. And so we've got it because Jesus prayed that we would have it. So we have the glory of God. We've got it now. And then Hebrews in chapter 6 and verse 10, the Bible talks about how that because of Jesus dying on the cross, that many would have this glory. And that word glory has the same meaning as the reputation of God. And Jesus had the reputation of God in perfection in every area of his life. And now we've got it too. All we have to do is, number one, I've given you enough scripture, and there's, there's, there's a lot more. You go home, and in fact, if you go to our, our care group leaders, that I give them my notes. And so if you want the notes, you have to go to a care group meeting this week, and they'll copy them off and give them to you. And so you'll have them. But now, so we've already given you enough scripture. In fact, Jesus said that it's a doctrine. If you have three scriptures, I've already given you much more than that, validating that you're perfect. Now, I want to show you how to receive it. It's just like that Mercedes that somebody gives you or a Rolls Royce. If they give it to you, you don't know how to drive it, it's not going to do you any good. I want to show you how that now you can be a partaker of this. You can experience it. And you'll start, I, I promise you, if you'll just, Listen to these simple steps. Immediately, a sensation will come all over you. you say, oh, man, I always wanted to have perfect peace. I always wanted to have perfection in my flesh. I always wanted to have perfection in everything that has anything to do with me, mentally, physically, financially, socially, to have perfection. That's having heaven on earth, isn't it? And remember, Jesus prayed and Matthew chapter 6, the first thing he said, he said, pray, the disciples asked him, how should we pray? And he said, well, pray this way. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that it be on earth as it is in heaven. You don't have to die to start experiencing the same perfection that God is experiencing now because he died for you. He died for you. Amen. He died for you. Isn't that awesome? You know that uh, I remember many years ago, I thought, man, I wish I had somebody rich in my family 
that was older and they'd die and I'd be in their will. And so when they die, then I could cash in on their will and I'd be wealthy. But I didn't have no relatives. It was all Indians and some black people. I got some Germans in there too. In fact, I got a whole, whole mess. <laughs> I can't find any of them rich. But you, guess what? If you're in somebody's will... It's not going to do you an ounce of good until they die. They got to die. Did you ever notice, if you'll read a will, it says at the very top, it'll say the testament of. And then it gives you all the promises. And it signs their name at the, at the end of it. And guess what? We have a new testament. A new testament. It's the testament of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the reason why the devil don't want you to read the will of God. Because all these promises belong to you and you don't have to die for it to be good because He died. Amen. So many people, they think, I've got to die so that I can have... No, no, no. No, no, no. The person that wrote the Testament has to die. He already died. And now we get to enjoy perfection in every area of thinking. There's two things that you can do to get Jewish people's attention and to get Americans' attention. Talk about money. And I'm t how'd you like to have your bank account with perfection? That's not a play on words. God said it. He, as it is in heaven, it'd be on earth. Now I want to show you how. How simple it is for you to start receiving this perfection, the instructions. And immediately, when I share it, you'll say, well, I can do that, and I'm going to do that right now. How many likes to know those instructions? We've absolutely run out of time. I'd wait till next week. No, no, turn your Bibles. 1 Peter and chapter 1. Perfection, receiving God's perfection is this simple. Watching the words of our mouth. If the, let the words of our mouth be acceptable in the sight of God. And God's by your side 100% of the time. Sometimes we have a tendency to change our vocabulary if we're in the presence of somebody and we know they're a very holy Christian. We're going to have to watch our tongue. Well, you better watch it because the King of kings and Lord of lords God of all creation, he's right by your side. Julie, I, I've known you, my goodness. I don't know how long have I known you, probably 30 or 40 years? Since 1980, I think. And I've always known you to be a, a really a holy lady and know how to trust God. And so I, I, I sense in my heart that you're trusting God for something that has to do with your health that's what I sense if I'm wrong you can tell me but I see a spirit like in your back region and it goes down to like your um, on the right hand side and most of the time when I see a spirit on your spinal column and into your right hip region most time people are having problems like with a sciatic nerve or something like that have you been to the doctor for anything no I haven't been to the doctor for Okay, that. do you have any problems? Yes. Okay, been that, having issues. In that same area? Yeah. So oh, this is going to be fun. Low back issues. Low, lower back issues. In Jesus' name, we destroy the efforts of the devil in her lower back. Leave now in Jesus' name. Now, Julie, if you don't mind, stand up and do something that was difficult or that you couldn't do before and focus on how much better you are. <laughs> Twist back and forth. How much better is that, Julie? 100%. Isn't God a good God? All the time. Amen. Hello, dear friend. We have a very special Christmas offer. It's going to be a great enhancement to you and your loved ones. And uh, I promise you that when you listen to this CD that Donna made, it's her uh, singing, that uh, the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit will be so real and it will bless you greatly that Don and I, we went to Nashville, Tennessee, and we paid a lot of money to go to the best recording studio that was in Nashville, as well as people that played instruments. They were the very best. And uh, 
So we have this special Christmas offer. It'll end the last day of December. And uh, it's two CDs of Donna singing. This is the back cover. And this is the front cover. You get two CDs for $27. This is offer number 85. And go to melbon.com and order yours today. And be blessed this Christmas season. God bless you richly. Hello, dear friend. God wants you to be filled with his fullness. As I study the Bible, I find there's many scriptures in the Bible that are very clear, like Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19, where the Bible plainly teaches us that God says he wants us to know how much he loves us unconditionally that passes all knowledge, and this will cause us to be filled with the fullness of God. If we're filled with the fullness of God, then John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14 will become a reality in our life where that we can do the works of Jesus and greater so that God could be glorified and so that people would be blessed and so that you would be blessed. And it all hinges on us knowing the great depths of love that God has for us. Well, since 1974, I have studied intensely the original languages of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and I found a great amount of verses and words, a huge amount of verses and words that go into much greater detail in the original language, showing us the great depths of God's unconditional love that he has for the human race. And I've taken all of that information, all of those verses and all of those words, and I've placed it in the King James Bible. I now have it in print. We have a Bible that is called the King James Truth Version. It's made first class with genuine leather, and it has all that information so that you can know how much God loves you that passes all knowledge so that you could be filled with the fullness of God. You can get your copy, if you would like, by going to our website, which is melbon.com. Go to the bookstore section, and you'll find the Bible there. And it's for $125 if you want one copy. If you want two copies, you can get two of them for $200. And this takes in shipping and handling. I am absolutely convinced that this Bible is going to be a major tool that's going to bring in the great harvest, going to bring many people into the kingdom of God. Many people are going to be blessed. God's going to be glorified. And uh, you're going to... Be filled with God's fullness, and that's a tremendous desire of God. God wants you to be filled with His fullness. Thank you for watching Last Day Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. For more teaching and information, check out our website at melbond.tv or write us at Agape Church, P.O. Box 306, Wentzville, Missouri, 63385, or call our office at 636-327-5632. Keep up to date by friending us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Last Day Signs and Wonders is made possible by the generous gifts of our partners. Please consider becoming a partner and help Mel Bond take this message of Last Day Signs and Wonders around the world.